Hey everyone, just coming back to you with another motivational video. Today's video is about living with no goals, living comfortable, and bitching and complaining, as so much people do. I wanted to start off saying thank you for 100 views on my other video, making choices, think 64 for victim mentality, and about 55, 56 for aiming too low. Be sure to check those out. Every day, I sit and meet people, obviously. I meet new people, I'm in that business, and I meet this, or I talk to the same old people every day. So I talk to my coworker every single day, and today was a little bit different. See, we usually talk about how she wants a new job. That's good. That's a step up. That is, you know, aiming for better, right? I think so. There's a problem to that. When you sit there and tell me you want a better job, but you're not willing to make the sacrifices that it takes to get a better job, you don't really want a better job. You're not willing to put in that effort and that time and the blood, sweat, and tears that it takes to go get that other job that you want, a better job. She goes, every job wants somebody with a GED or a high school diploma. Then why don't you get your GED and your high school diploma and suck it up, buttercup? And she says, well, you know, I'm not smart enough. Well, honestly, I don't think a lot of people are very smart that go get their GED or high school diploma, but they do it anyways because it's a bottom tier type of thing. It's a base level type of thing. That's why they made it college so you can go get a better education. I said there's a lot of people who can go get their GEDs. You don't need to be brilliant. Believe me, you don't. It's good to have your high school diploma and your GED. It really is because it's a stepping stone. And it's a step in the right direction. She goes, well, my family's not going to give me my family inheritance if I don't, you know, have a high school diploma or GED. And I said, well, simple solution. Go get it. She goes, well, I don't know. I, 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 I just don't know, you know, time and, you know, money. Excuse me. Didn't you just say you wanted a better job? And then you tell me that the better jobs require you to go get a GED. Wouldn't it tell you to go get a better education? Wouldn't it click inside your head? Obviously, it's not. And I sat down and talked to her about that. You know, she goes, well, I'm not great at math. Neither am I. You know, when I was going for the military, that was probably the test that I failed the most was the math test. You know, and the practice tests but they make practice tests online and they have, you know, programs where it takes you step by step through the problems that you did wrong. And it shows you what you can do better. And you can do this for anything. I recommended this. Why don't you go take an ASVAB test online, a basic one, you know, take one or two tests a day and then go for a five minute walk. I said that test is going to you know, challenge you mentally, it's going to stress you out, but when you get done, you go for a, a walk, you feel better about yourself, and you have taken steps to get to where you need to be, and then when you feel comfortable, you go get your GED. And this really, really inspired her. She actually, I saw it, I saw it in her eyes, and I love this feeling. Oh, baby, I love this feeling when somebody realizes that they can go do something that they did not believe that they could do. She sat there and started to think. And I love, love when people start to think because your face changes. Oh, believe me, it does. And that's the best feeling in the world I know personally is when those gears start turning in your head. Because when your brain is extended with a new idea, a new thought, and it grasps it, there, it your brain's not going to be accepted with whatever it was dealing with before. Because it likes this new thing. It's kind of like a kid in a new toy. You walk that kid down an aisle with a whole bunch of new toys, that kid ain't going to want to go back home and play with his stupid old toys. I promise you. So don't walk that kid down that new aisle. I promise. 
unless you want to buy them those toys. But as an adult, you should always be experiencing new ideas, new thoughts, new challenges. And most people go through life expecting the world to change around them. And it's not going to, I promise. It's one thing to, you know, sit there and say, okay, you know, go take these classes and go get your GED, get a better job and have those goals. At least she has goals. There are people that get 12 hours of sleep. I get six, 12 hours of sleep every single day. Do you not see a problem with that? I do. 12 hours of sleep means you're missing out. Missing out on your dreams of what you could have because they're claiming that they have none. Your goals still don't have any, obviously, if you're sleeping 12 hours. Your internal clock is not going, hey, hey, I need to get up. I need to get up. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. It's not doing that for them. And that's a problem. So when I sit there and I talk to people that have no goals, no dreams, and no aspirations, I get sick. I get sick to my stomach because I think about where I am. I go through every single day fed up, sick and disgusted, and I'm making the steps to go forward in my life. I'm not accepted of where I am. I am I'm exactly where I want to be, but I'm not happy about it. I feel like I could have gone further, could have done better, and I'm right. I could have made some other choices that I didn't make. I didn't pull the trigger on a few things. There are days I did want to sleep in, and I probably missed out. I told you the story about when I didn't go to hockey practice, and they were having you know, the scouts there picking out a kid for the next day you know, to be promoted up to the next team. Oh, baby, that happens all the time at work. And when you decide to call out or you decide to sleep in or whatever you do, believe me, you're missing out. And life acts the same exact way. There are opportunities out there. You're failing to take them. I did too. So I ain't sitting there bashing you. Living with no goals, living with goals and making no steps to get them, are one thing. Where I truly lose respect is for those who are living for others. It is good to help. It really is, don't get me wrong. It's fantastic to help. But when you base 110% of your time on other people, and then you tell me that you have goals and dreams, but you set them aside because they're not important. I lose respect. I do. I remember my life when I wasn't challenging myself. I, I do. Oh, baby, I do. I woke up late for school every day. My dad would come busting down that door and said, get up. Because my internal clock never did. And believe me, it scared the living hell out of me every time he busted through that door. I still have a heart attack every time that door, or I hear a door slam. Oh baby, oh who, man, you guys won't even believe how bad my heart beats when that happens. But I learned something from that. I've taken away a life lesson. When you're a teenager and you're a kid, you have your parents there. But as soon as you become an adult and you miss your alarm clocks, it's a whole different ball game. There ain't nobody to drive you to school. There ain't nobody to you know, hold your hand and say it's okay, because it ain't. You know, people don't get their asses up and go get their dreams. And I am dumbfounded by this, I really am. I don't understand it, and honestly, it confuses the hell out of me. There's a poem I wrote, once wrote. It was when I was feeling, you know, downer, more down in the dumps type of thing. And it was right before my mental state changed. And I love this poem for that. 
you know, normally I look at this and I'd be like, oh, you know, it's, it's depressing kind of, but it shows where I've come from. And I think many of you can relate to this poem. So here we go. Life, long and painful. Through hardships, many find happiness. A world where pain is not accepted. The word depression viewed as a sin. This life so slow as it winds down and not appreciated for its value. Controlled by acceptance, false pretenses for who you should be. Dedicated or dictated by money. Even though life may suck, all you got to do is just disconnect from the world, then you will see beauty. So you can tell, this is kind of when it was starting to change for me, is when I was starting to kind of get over that hump and starting to truly become my own. I've really come a long way since that. Probably not poetry wise because I stopped writing. I really probably shouldn't have because definitely see problems there. That wasn't perfect. But what you guys got to understand is when you start changing the way you think, the world starts changing in front of your eyes. It really does. I promise when you guys understand what I'm saying. Life is so beautiful, so majestic. I love every single day. Somebody may ask me, you know, how are you feeling today? Are you loving life? And I'll say, physically, I don't feel good because some days I don't. And just like anybody else, I've got a body. I, I know exactly what you guys mean when you're saying you're just not having a great day physically. But mentally, I'm having a fantastic day because I can see the sun shining or I can see it raining. I love thunderstorms, guys. And I am appreciating the little things in life. And that's something I want you guys to understand and grasp, grasp too. Is it is all about the little things. It really is. You know, I can sit here and rant all I want about how you guys can be better. And you guys really can be. You guys have so much inside of you. And I don't even know you. And I can tell you that you have so much inside of you that it is unreal. You guys have so much potential and so much aspirations and you guys can collect these stories and tell them however you want through tattoos like I do, through speaking like I do, or through art or some other type of form. Writing. My coworker, the one that I told you about, she said she was fantastic at writing. And now she can't even pick up a pen and start a paragraph. The famous Les Brown always says, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. And it's the truth. But what we got to do is start making sacrifices in our lives. We got to start changing the little things, guys. Because I know something about you. There's a piece of you deep, deep down inside that says, Hello? Anybody there? Hello? And it's sitting there knocking. Waiting for you to realize that there's so much more that you can experience and do and see and become. I can sit here and yell all I want, but it ain't going to do a damn thing. It might fire you up a little bit like it does me, but at the end of the day, it's going to be an emotional side in, or change inside of you. It's going to be something that finally blows up. For me, it was dressing nice every day. I love dressing up. I really do. I went to college when I was in college. Every single day I wore a dress shirt, a tie, and my favorite jeans. And trust me, I wore dress shirts that went with jeans because there are some that, oof, my God, they don't. But whatever. It's the little things. You know, it's getting up early. It's writing a poem even though you're not good at writing it. It's just the little things, guys. Because when you start doing the little things, like taking a test online and then going for a five-minute walk, that's when your life begins to change. When the little fire inside of you starts flickering and burning, 
You ever see a forest fire? That thing starts out real small and it gets real big real quick. I promise that's how it is inside. It really is. I need you guys to grab that fire inside of you and pull it out. I meet people every single day and I want to meet more people that have this fire roaring. I, I've met quite a few, don't get me wrong. But from my generation, I'm 19 years old, I'm fairly young. I want to meet more people from my generation that can pull it out and, you know, ex just be able to tell that, you know, smoking marijuana and drinking alcohol is not life. Going to parties, that's not what it's all about. You know, I was talking to my friend Mark Carlson. Shout out there. He said, the quality, you know, it, his favorite thing about life is that he's able to be physical. Do push-ups, move, walk, and these are little things, guys. Little things that you can do that you don't even take advantage of. And if you can't walk, then you got something else. And I, you know, you're able to breathe. That's a little thing. That you're, you're able to think on your own. That's a little thing. There's so many people that have these accidents happen to them that they can't even think on their own. They can't even eat by themselves. You guys got to understand that. There are, there are little things in life that we take so much for granted that we don't even understand. You got to sacrifice who you are for what you want to become. And it's the truth. When I was younger, I would always sell my PlayStation 3. I sold it about five times and brought it back because I didn't have that fire to say, no, Sebastian, no more. Stop getting it. You know, that type of thing. I'd pawn it off and I'd go sell or go buy a cheap one. But at the end of the day, I would sell it. And I finally sold it. And my sister says, why did you sell it? And I said, you got to sacrifice who you are for, where, for what you want to become. And I was huge into Eric Thomas at the time. That was my guy. Every single day I would work 40 hours. I would go to school 40 hours a week, you know, type of thing. And I would come home every single day, listen to him every single day. Because that was something that I found enjoyment out of. For some people it's music, it really isn't for me too. But Listening to Eric Thomas was my therapy at the time. And I'm going to be honest, I love listening to Eric Thomas and listening to uh, Les Brown. Those are my two favorite speakers. And I would love to meet each of them. Because I once gave a speech for my grandma's eulogy. And somebody had asked me, that's why I'm bringing it up, is, uh, you know, where did you find this, you know, passion to speak? And it's when I first spoke at my grandmother's eulogy, you know, the fire that burned inside of me when I did it. You know, you could capture everybody else's attention with just words. I love that feeling. And I gave up speaking because all I did was my grandmother's eulogy. But listening to Eric Thomas and listening to Les Brown speak is so captivating. And I want to be just like that. And I hope that I'm just as captivating, if not more, because that's what I'm really trying to do, guys. It's what I'm really trying to do. I'm trying to go big. But they're, they were so captivating that they said, whatever you want to do, you can do. And this is what I want to do. And this is what I'm doing. And it's the same to you guys. Whatever you guys want to do, whatever you guys want to be, wherever you guys want to go, you can do it. All you got to do is sacrifice who you are for where you'll, or what you want to be. And you will get there. I promise you got to put in the blood, sweat, and tears. But you will get there. It ain't going to be easy. And believe me, you'd rather it not be. Because at the end of the day, you will have results. And believe me. There's so many people who give up on their dreams. So many people who stop and quit that there is so much room at the top. It's not even funny no more. It ain't even competitive. So all you gotta do is make the decision. Make the decision to change. 
Make the small choices, appreciate the little things, and life as you know it will be a hundred times better today than it was yesterday. Because if you take away tomorrow, will you really appreciate what you did yesterday? And if you can say yes, then you've lived life correctly. Thank you guys. Be sure to check out those other videos. Hope to be coming with another one. Uh, thank you guys.